So we've been going through a message on how to make lemonades when life takes your lemons. And you have heard about all different parts of areas of your life, and they've kind of dialed in on just one area each week. Because if you're like me at all, you you can only do one thing at a time. If you showed me all the things that, that I was bad at or not good at, you know, I would probably feel overwhelmed, paralyzed, stressed out. And that's not what we want to do. We're here to help you grow into a better dad, to be a better husband, to be a better brother, sister, coworker, neighbor, follower of Jesus. Uh, but in order to do that, you know, we want to see those things in just the different areas of your life. But you know, this is a bonus message because we want to take a step back and kind of look at the big picture. You know, how can we look at the big picture of our life and begin to make strides to make it better? Because we don't want to just, you know, change everything. We want to do one thing at a time. You know, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. A life that isn't examined isn't worth living. Now, you've done this for yourself in, in different ways. You know, think back when you had your first date. Maybe it's with your wife now or your husband now, or maybe it was, uh, you know, when you were 16 years old, 18 years old. Me, it was 17-year-old when I had my first date. And you know what I did before I went out? I made sure I looked in the mirror and examined my, my acne, my pimples, and I smelled my, ch- my, my armpits, and I wanted to make sure I looked really good because this date, this girl was really special, and I wanted to make an impression. And that's the same way with life. We want to make sure we examine our life. We want to make sure we look in the mirror. We want to make sure we smell good so that when we go out, and for us right now, it's reopening our county. When we go out, that we're going to be better for it, that we're going to be stronger. We're going to be uh, not, nor- not our old normal. It's a new normal because we're living in a new normal now. We're living in uh, when we are between glass, plexiglass at the restaurants and at the grocery stores. You know, we've got these square tiles and Walmart that tell us what direction to walk and where to stand. I mean, there is a new normal for our, our world. And you don't have to be the old normal. You can be a new normal too. So this is what we're going to do. I want you to grab a pencil and paper and copy this text. We're going to go straight into the different areas of life that we have talked about. And so I want you to make, write all this down, pretty much copy it on a piece of paper and make a little line just like this. Uh, it'll be a scale of one to 10. And I'll give you more instruction in just a minute. But right now, I want you to grab that pencil, grab that paper. I'll actually give you two minutes and we're going to play some fun little music. You ready? Go. Go.
All right, guys, I hope you have everything you need. Now, if you just stayed on the couch and you didn't move, I, I bet you're the person that in the classroom, you're in the back of the class. <laughs> and you know what? I love you. It's okay. What I want us to do, though, is not be the same person that we started this quarantine in. So would you lean in with me and begin to rate yourself, one, meaning terrible, 10, meaning amazing, each area of your life. And I'll start with financial. If you forgot or you maybe you're just checking us out for the first time, financial would mean, you know, how well are you taking care of things financially? A one might mean you are considering filing bankruptcy. Like the stimulus check isn't enough. You know, perhaps if you're a 10 on the financial, the pandemic, this crisis had nothing no impact on your spending. Like you're still ordering on Amazon. You're still using Uber Eats. You're still making your payments to 401k and all those things. And it's not really affecting you because you have a really healthy, strong financial area of your life. That's great. Now here's a rule. Maybe some of you have already done this. Maybe you've already rated yourself. You are not allowed to use the number five in this rating scale. You cannot use a five. You got to be either on one side or the other, okay? So intellectual, are you using this part of your life, the brain, your, your thoughts, your creativity, your ideas? So a one might look like you're just binge watching Netflix. You've seen Tiger King, you know, two <laughs> times. You know, perhaps you are just a couch potato playing video games. What might that look like for you? Uh, if you're a 10, you're learning lots of new things. <laughs> you've, you've had to do a lot of shifting and creating so that you can earn more money or so that you can survive in this time. So you've been selling things from your storage unit and you've been creating all these different ideas on how to make money. Like that would be using your intellect and you're doing a lot of that. Uh, you know, for those that are in school still, you're still doing learning. You're still doing distance learning. It just looks a lot different. Physical. You know, one might be You've gained 15, 20 pounds right now in the last eight weeks, which was true for me. Like, you uh, are in pain a lot because you're overweight and you're taking diabetes medicine. Diabetic, you're a diabetic and you're taking all this medicine and you're just not a very healthy person. You know, if you're a 10, perhaps you're, you're healthy. You're exercising multiple days a week. You're getting eight hours of sleep, maybe more. You're taking care of what you put in your body, and you're eating healthy. Those would be kind of factors, indicators, kind of where you are physically. Relational, you know, perhaps if you're a one, you might say something like uh, that you're lonely, you're depressed, you're, no one's contacted you because you don't have any friends. Perhaps Sunday mornings are the only time you really connect with people on Facebook because your relationships just, there's not a lot of them. They're not bad. There's just maybe not as many as you'd like. And so that's a one or that's a low scale thing. Or maybe you're a 10 and you're just able to connect and every family member in your household is talking to you. You know, you're, you have a great relationship with your spouse. You just had a deep conversation with your child and you're on this beautiful like relationship, you know, season where you can tell each other everything. I mean, that could be you right now. Spiritual. You know, maybe if you say you're a one, it's, you know, I've walked away from church or I'm not, I'm, I'm really on the verge of not believing. Uh, I actually uh, haven't heard from God in a while. My, my faith feels very fake and shallow. Uh, or maybe it's a 10 and, and it's on the other side and it's more like a, I just got back from youth camp or I just finished this missionary, this mission trip and I'm on fire and everything's going right. I feel like God's speaking to me. It's amazing. You know, those might be the things that you're feeling, you know, and, and we want you to share. And, and, and at the end of the message, you know, Zach and I are going to share personally, you know, where we stand on a few of these things and share some stories on why we feel that way. And we want you to do the same thing. So, this is a chance right now for you. Now that, now that you've got these and you've got your numbers for each of those, uh, we want you to do this. We want you to get your phone and we want you to text LEMONS, L-E-M-O-N-S, LEMONS to 908 
9088. Text Lemons to 90888. And it's just going to be three questions. Uh, three questions that now that you've looked at every area of your life, which one's going to be the best and which one's the worst? Or which one's got the highest score and which one's got the lowest score? And you, I'm going to give you permission to be on your phone right now. Go ahead, get on your phone, and begin, you know, fill out the assessment. It should take you, you know, seconds once you got it going. And then uh, that way, at the end of our message, Zach and I can share a little bit of our personal stories and where we sit, but also hear from you, kind of where you are. It's completely anonymous, so we're not going to see who said what and what they said, and it's going to be a, a chance for us to engage and interact with one another. Because no matter what you put down on any of these uh, lines, Jesus would have uh, you know that there is something for you. Like, no matter where, what scale, like, there is more to be had. You see, Jesus gave three guys, he told a story about this master who gave three guys different amounts of money, resources, coins, talents. He gave one guy ten. And he gave another guy five, and he gave one, a third one. And then, he, and then he left. And those three guys took what they had, and the first one, he ended up doubling his resource that was given. He might have started a small business. You know, he took his ten, his ten coins, his, his ten talents, and he invested them into a business, and he began to, to make some profits. And so at the end of the day, he had double, and, and the master ended up, coming back and talking to all of them. And he asked the guy with 10, what'd you do with these 10? And the guy said, well, you know, I, I started this small business. Uh, I, I, I was able to make some business cards. I was able to, to get some relationships built with other people. And what happened was I, my business exploded, and now I've got twice as much worth as what I started with. You know what the master said? He said, way to go, man. We're going to have a party, and you're, you're invited. Man, I'm so proud of you. Well done. And then he went to the next guy, that he gave five coins, five talents, five resources. He asked him, hey, you know, I gave you this. What would you do with it? And the guy said, well, you know, I really loved, uh, you know, teaching. So what I did is I, I went and got a teaching license, and I invested my money in my education so that I can get a job, and I can, I can be in education, I can teach. And what I did with that teaching was I made more. You know, I, I saved the money that I got from what I taught, how I taught and who I taught in the, in the different schools uh, that I was able to be employed at. And now I have 10 coins. I have 10 resources. But not only that, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of kids and children and youth that are smarter because of me. It says, wow, I gave you five and then you got five more? You double? Way to go! That's amazing! I'm so proud of you. You know, I've got this party. You are invited to it. We're going to celebrate. Well done. And then he goes to the last one who we gave one coin to. And he said, you know, let me go dig it up because I was really fearful and really afraid that you're going to be harsh with me because I know you're a man who reaps what he doesn't sow. I know you're a man who expects a lot and I didn't want to disappoint. Well, but the guy told us, like, you knew this about me. And you still decided to just dig it and put it in the ground. You could have at least put it in a bank and gotten some interest. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take your one, and I'm going to give it to the guy who made ten. And that guy said, what? That's not fair. Why are you taking it? I mean, he already has ten. This is the part that right now, like, I want you to be leaning in and being thinking, like, this isn't fair. You're right. But there's this truth, this principle that Jesus is trying to teach the people, the audience, the followers of this time, and he's trying to teach us right now, like, what you have, like, if you take good care of it, you will have more. Like, those things you put on a scale, like, there's going to be more that can be given as long as you use it well. This is what Jesus said. He said, to those who use well what they are given. To, to those who use well, take care of, 
steward, are responsible for uh, making investments on and do it well, are given, even more will be given. And they will have an abundance. Check this out. Like Jesus sounds like, if you do well with just the little, if, if you are faithful, like I'm going to bless you. And it's going to be more and more abundant. Even if it's only one. I know some of our scales probably, as we're looking at our different areas of our life, they're on the low end. Jesus would say, that's, that's okay. You can still use that well. Because this is true about you. You are the best investment. If you were to invest in anyone, if you were to invest in yourself, that would be the best investment you can make. But it didn't stop there. The you beside you is also the best investment. You just say, the you beside you is also the best investment. Because if you're the best investment, then the you beside you is also the best investment. So what are we trying to say? God's investment started with one. You see, when God first made his promise to the world to bring back people to himself, because there is this relationship we had with God, like as a humankind that was broken, and Jesus and God did not want that to be the, the way forever. And so he made this investment. He said, I don't want that anymore. I'm going to make a plan, but it's going to start with one person. And this is what he said. This is what he said to Abraham in Genesis 12, 2. He says, I will bless you, one person, and make you famous. He's talking to Abraham right now. And you will be a blessing to others. And if you don't know who Abraham is, great. No one did at his time. No, in fact, Abraham wasn't his real name. It was Abram. God gave him a new name. He wasn't famous. He wasn't, no one knew tons about Abraham around the world. He was just famous in his own little clan. And God said, I'm going to make an investment in one person so that you will be a blessing to others. Why? Because the you beside you is the best investment. The world's going to have a new normal. So should you. The world is not going to be the same. You already know this. It's not going to be the same. You shouldn't be the same either. And so I, what I want from us as a church, what I want from, for you and your family, is to be a new normal that's going to be a better you. That if you were to invest just one thing, you would be better for it. So, here's a question that was asked in the assessment. What is the area of your life you are doing the best at? And Zach and I are going to talk a little bit personally, you know, what is the area that uh, Zach and I are doing the best at? So, Zach, would you mind, would you want to go first? Uh, sh- sure, Pastor. Okay. Anything to make your life easier. Um, so the one that I chose, the area that I'm doing the best in, I picked intellectual. And the reason is because uh, I've been listening to audiobooks mm-hmm. and um, even been talking with them about people and being really intentional about some of my consumption uh, on my commute and while I'm working for eight hours a day. And it's been really inspirational and motivational for me. Um, and it has helped change my life. And I think that started like with the mind. Um, so I think that that's the best, uh, my best area right now. What about you, Pastor? Well, you stole mine. because <laughs> <laughs> Mine was intellectual too. And it's a little bit different reason, but we're on the same track because uh, like a lot of people, who are listening and in, engaged in this pandemic is you had to do a lot of shifting and pivoting mm-hmm. to change. And so there's been a lot of ideas that um, I've had to come up with with how to get communion out, how to, uh, you know, learn Facebook Live. You know, thank you, Brendan Detweiler and Paula Dar for being a big part of making Facebook Live happen. You know, learning how to do Instagram and, you know, trying to uh, be engaged socially. Like, I've, I guess I feel like intellectually my, my brain has been you know, working really hard to try to figure that out. Stretched. S- super stretched. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So I've been reading the assess the uh, surveys that you guys have answered. So thank you. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, and it's so interesting. So the area of life that is doing the best right now, the highest overall, thirty five percent said physical. Really. Uh, twenty four cool. percent said relational, eighteen intellectual, eighteen financial, and six percent said spiritual, which is only one response. So out of the seventeen people that responded, only one person said spiritual is the highest. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's so interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think it was one of the older people because there's the, the age group or whatever yeah. and it didn't show up until the a later age group showed up. But for a long time, there's no one that put spiritual at their top Yeah. and uh, later on is. But people say physical is their best. That's great. The area of their life that's doing the best right now. Cool. Yeah. Um, so what about the area of life that's doing the worst? <laughs> Share all your sins with us, Pastor Caleb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was walking with Christine to uh, the park with all the boys, and we had our red boxes in our hand, and I told Christine, you know, hey, you need to go to Red Box and then meet us at the park. Because Christine had, you know, the, the, I guess the, the running outfit on. I was just wearing regular shoes, and she was wearing running shoes. And it's like, if you run there and then run to McKay Park, it'll be like you let, never left. And she looked at me, it's like, but... That's not what I want. Like, I want to be with my family. Relationships are the thing I struggle with most because in my mind, I'm thinking, what's the most efficient way to get as much done as possible? And that's, that's good for being maybe productive, but not good for building relationships. So I think for me, like, I know relationships need to improve mm -hmm. or looked at a better way so that I can enjoy, you know, the family more, enjoy friendships more, enjoy, you know, things yeah. like that. Makes sense. What about you? Um, so I put physical as, as my worst one. And as you know, we've, me and Caleb have been jogging three times a week for the last, what, month now? Yeah. The last month. So I've been working on it some. Yeah. Doing but, good. He's doing pretty good. <laughs> so, but my weight, which is not not the only metric to measure how your physical thing is going, has increased mm. <laughs> by a pound or two. And uh, this last week, I got a rash in my armpit. Oh. And so it was just kind of painful and uncomfortable. And my coworker's like, well, if you're using antiperspirant and deodorant, maybe you should try just using deodorant. So today actually was the first time that I grabbed some <laughs> deodorant. This is Rikard Extreme Defense. <laughs> if anyone needs any recommendations, 0% <laughs> aluminum deodorant which if you need to borrow some let me know never okay <laughs> <laughs> and um just some physical thing yeah my body is not yeah. where i want it to be yeah um and so that's why i put that mm -hmm. feels like the worst physical um what's our results say? and our people have also said the highest one was 35 percent of them said physical mm. was their worst uh metric wow. oh is up there on the computer yeah okay cool and um yeah, intellectuals down there, second highest. So I can relate to you people. Thank you. You people are my people. Yeah, Zach, what would you I mean, both the best and the worst mm -hmm. is physical. Huh. Does that seem interesting to you? Yeah. And it's right in the middle of all of those things, too. So there's probably a lot of things that's affecting that are above it and below yeah, it. Yeah. Um, one thing I just want to say is just a side note. If anyone has watched Tiger King twice, you need to talk to me because you have a problem. All right. So look, I just had to throw that out there before we went too much further. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, these assessments and this is just an opportunity for us to kind of hear from you. But, you know, what now is the step to take from here? You know, you know where you stand and, you know, what's the lowest and what's the highest. Like, what's the next best thing? Now, if I had a bucket and I put a bunch of holes in the bucket, and they're all the same size holes. You know, what, and I want to fill this water, fill this bucket with water. Like, what hole would you start with first? I wish I had a bucket. I should have had a bucket. But what hole would you start with first? You'd start with the hole on the bottom, like the, the one, the lowest hole. And that's our goal for you. That's my goal. It's like, what is your lowest area of your life? Like, maybe you struggle with the most and tackle that one. Just doing one thing to make an improvement, make an adjustment, make a shift so that that could improve. And I'm not saying go from a 1 to a 10. You know, perhaps you're at a 3 at your physical, and you just chose to do one thing to make it a 4. 
Because once you start adding and improving and investing in that place, it raises the water level of that area of your life, but it's going to raise the water level and your capacity in all the other areas of your life too. Okay? So what's the one thing that you can do to invest in yourself in that lowest area of your life? And then, who's the you beside you that you could invest in? Because there's always a you beside you who's also the best investment. That perhaps you can take some of those strengths, some of those really high, your highest, your best area of your life, and you can begin to use that for others. I mean, that was God's game plan, that he would use one for others. And that's also the game plan for us, that he would use one for others. So how could, in those two areas of your life, can you make an impact in yourself, but also in someone else beside you?